Renting a car and driving in Japan seems to be getting popular and popular among overseas travelers. But one worrisome situation is the highway. I mean, one mistake could ruin your whole trip. So it's nice to familiarize yourself with how Japanese highways operate. That's where I come in. Hey guys, I'm Yusuke Nasu, and welcome to Japanese Quest, the channel that's all about helping you guys learn about Japan and narrate your trip. And today, I would like to tell you six tips on how to drive on the highway in Japan. That's coming right up. At the entrance of the highway, there is usually a toll gate. You will see some of the lanes say ETC with a purple colored sign, while others say Ipan in Japanese with a green color. Most of the cars in Japan have an automatic toll payment system called ETC. So first of all, if you are renting a car, it's always best to ask for a car with the ETC system. Because, well, it makes everything easier, with not really much downside. So make sure to rent a car with the ETC system if possible. Okay, so if you have the ETC system set in your car, at the entrance of the highway, you can simply drive slowly through the lane marked ETC. The toll gate bar will automatically open and let you pass. And if your car does not have the ETC system, make sure to go to the Ippan lane, otherwise you will create a huge traffic jam behind you, and you would not want to be in that situation. Well, trust me, I've done it. Okay, so once you arrive at the gate, you take a ticket manually, with which you can pay when you get off the highway. Most of the highways have several lanes. The leftmost one is the slow lane. In Japan, it's generally recommended to drive on the slow lane, except for the time you overtake a car. The right side is the passing lane. If you want to overtake a car, you switch to this lane, pass the car, and safely go back to the slow lane. So how fast you can go on the highway? Well, Japanese law states you can go up to 100 km per hour, but how fast we locals actually drive? Well, generally speaking, most of the cars go up to about 20 km per hour faster than the speed limit. So if the limit is 70, some go 90. If it's 100, some go 120 at the fastest moment. Well, personally, I drive very safely, so I use I usually go around 95 km per hour, and I'm usually one of the slower ones. So when you get tired while driving, don't push yourself, just take a rest. About every 15 km, there is a parking area, and about every 50 km, there is a service area. They are both resting areas. So what's the difference? Well, a parking area is typically a small resting space with a restroom, vending machine, and sometimes a few small stores. Whereas a service area is huge, and it has everything you need from restaurants to souvenir shops. By the way, the Japanese highway is one way, so you cannot go around in circles. So if you fail to park your car, you need to proceed to the main highway road and keep driving until the next resting area. How to get off? Well, just like the entrance, there will be a toll gate at your exit. Again, if you have the ETC system, you can just go to one of the ETC lanes and it will automatically calculate the fee and charge it to your ETC system, which you will pay to your rental car company when you return your car. And if you don't have the ETC system, you will have to pay manually. And some major roads accept credit cards, but generally speaking, it is best to assume that you will have to pay in cash. So the best English website I know to calculate the fee for the highway is Drapra. You can either search by name or from a map. 
and it also shows Japanese traffic rules and etiquette. So I highly recommend you check this website. It's always nice to drive in the countryside of Japan, and one of the great destinations is Takayama in Gif Prefecture. It has a great culture, beautiful nature, lovely weather, and tasty food. And I personally think Takayama is best to be explored by a rental car. That's why I made this video. And if you are coming to Takayama, let me introduce my vacation rentals, Japanese Day. I can honestly say these are the best accommodations in the town. For more details, please check out the link in the description below. Okay, that's it for today. I'm Yusuke Nasu, and thank you for watching Japanese Quest. See you next time!